Our Spiritual Gifts A Preview of the Lesson on Seven Biblical Terms Prepared in May of 2023 Learning objectives for this episode include the following To identify several gifted Christians To know seven key New Testament terms for gift to explain how these terms interact, and to relate spiritual gifts to the Trinity. As a preliminary query, who has a spiritual gift? Read aloud 1 Corinthians 12, 6. And then ask, what were the results from any gifts inventories that you have taken? Let each one present share the results of such a test or what they believe to be their spiritual gifts. Then read aloud 1 Peter 4.10 and ask, What does multifaceted imply about God's grace? Allow any who wish to reply. The first of seven New Testament terms for spiritual gifts is the Greek term doria, usually translated free gift. Read aloud Ephesians 3, 7. And then ask for discussion on how does someone qualify to become a Christian minister or worker? There will be many answers. The primary qualification is to have been gifted by God. Then read aloud Ephesians 4, 7. And then ask, how much or how many gifts does each one receive? There is no one right answer other than whatever the Lord Jesus grants to each one. To put spiritual gifts in context, Review briefly the 14 free gifts from God according to the New Testament. These include the Gospel, the Good News, the Grace of God, the Redemption, Redemption secured by Christ on His cross, Righteousness, which comes from God, Everlasting life, which is promised to all believers. His Holy Spirit, who lives with us. The opportunity of repentance unto life. Marriage is a gift of God. As as is wisdom to all who ask. The spiritual gifts themselves. And power to live and power over evil, the meeting of our daily needs, the virtue of self-control, and the future life in Christ's kingdom. A second term for spiritual gift is pneumatikos. Read aloud 1 Corinthians 12.1. Note that the term is comprised of two elements, pneuma, which means breath or spirit, and tikos, which implies having the quality of the noun. An alternative translation is spiritually gifted ones, that is, individuals who have a spiritual gift. Discuss briefly what danger does this verse try to avoid. The term unaware is in Greek is agnostos or ignorant. One distinct danger is that of being deceived by those who lay claim to a spiritual gift which may not be authentic. Then read 1 Corinthians 14:37 aloud. Some self-styled prophets made some predictions in the year 2020 that did not come true. According to this verse, 
What is a better guide to discern God's will or divine truth? A third term for gift is charisma, a gift of grace. Read Romans 12.6 aloud. Note that the term grace here is the cause of gifts, and the word charisma is the effect of grace. So discuss together, how can I get the gift that I want? Note that it is not a matter of what I want, but of what God gives. Well, what about the gift that I need? Well, it's not I who need the gift. It's the body, the fellowship, the community. Then read 1 Corinthians 12, 4. And 1 Peter 4, 10. So, just how much respect do others owe me for my gifts? Well, they may respect you for the use of your gift, but it is God who gave it. A fourth word for gift is diakonia, literally, service or ministry. Read 1 Corinthians 12, 5 aloud. And then Ephesians 3, 7. Discuss together, what is the primary qualification to serve in a church? Well, it's not my education. It's whatever gift of God's grace he has given me. A fifth term is that of energema, which sounds like what European word? Sometimes translated working, other times effects. Read aloud 1 Corinthians 12, 6. Then ask, what can we do to make our church more effective? Do we need more prayer, better music, a new worship style? Should we advertise, canvas our neighborhood, or feed the homeless, which of course we already do, a better answer is to allow each one to serve according to the gift that God has given them. Then read 1 Corinthians 12.10, which reads literally, Effects of Miracles. The miracles that are actually described in the New Testament include the multiplying of food for the hungry, healing of the sick, the raising of dead, and the casting out of evil spirits. Which of these is still needed in your community? Gifts are also called a manifestation, phanerosis. Read aloud 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Then ask, how can one see the invisible Holy Spirit at work? Note that all the religions provide for ecstatic experiences. But what is unique about the Holy Spirit? And who in our church manifests the Holy Spirit? Well, all who are serving one another. The seventh term is that of Stewardship, oikonomia, which sounds like what European word? Read aloud Ephesians 3, 2. And then 1 Peter 4, 10. And again, 1 Corinthians 4, 2. It is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. So, how can we know whether we are stewarding our gifts? Allow anyone to reply in any way they wish. But then ask, are we active? Are we trying to serve? Do we have joy in what we do? And are others well served? Do they benefit? And are others growing? 
in their faith and obedience to Jesus. Bringing these terms together, we note that gifts begin with God, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, giving grace. The result then is the gift that we possess, the Doria, which makes of each of us a spiritual person. The giftedness is called charisma, which we possess, but which then must be exercised in some kind of service or ministry, a diakonia, towards others in our community. When this happens, there is then the working, the results, the outcome, the effect of that gift. From God's perspective, this is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our midst. And from our perspective, we are fulfilling our stewardship one towards another. The Trinity in our spiritual gifts. Read aloud 1 Corinthians 12, 4, noting the word for gift and the presence of the Spirit, the Spirit of God. Then verse 5, noting the term diakonia and the presence of the term Lord. And then verse 6, here we have the effects, the energema, and the same God. Those familiar with the New Testament will note that the terms Spirit, Lord, and God often occur in the same context being the origin of the eventual Christian doctrine of biunity and eventually triunity. Well, what are some practical implications of this observation? Note that the Holy Spirit manifests himself in Christians by his grace gifts. That it is the Lord Jesus who ministers to his bride by coordinating each one's ministry. And then God the Father bringing about effects or results by working through all active Christians. Thus we can conclude, we enjoy God more by serving one another as a Christian community than we possibly could by individual spirituality or private worship. Therefore, we would like to conclude, let us be active in the body of Christ, especially in many churches, tiny fellowships that remain free to obey together all Jesus' commandments under a gifted leader. So, let us keep starting daughter churches birthed by mother churches, served by father servants, empowering son servants. What do we mean? Well, we mean that little churches help to start new little churches, and leaders within those little churches coach, train, and advise new leaders in each of those little churches. So we have the feminine side, churches starting new churches, and the masculine side, church leaders raising up and coaching new church leaders. Both must happen simultaneously. With no leaders, new churches fail. With no new churches, no leaders arise. We invite you to visit the site galencura.online to find other documents, PowerPoint slides, and videos on the subject of our spiritual gifts.